Okay, so in this lesson, we're going to uh, continue uh, with integrating trigonometric functions, uh, but now using the method of linearization. Now, before we actually start solving uh, examples uh, or integrating functions using linearization, let's just recall first that in order to be able to integrate using the linearization method, you'd actually have uh, to know the double angle identities of cosine and sine and the compound angle identities of cosine and sine as well, or what we also call uh, the addition uh, formulas. So what is the method of linearization? If we do look at the following example, just take a sneak peek. So over here, we have to integrate uh, a power of sine. So usually if we go back to the substitution method, we usually whenever we have a power, we start by setting u, whatever quantity we have inside that power. So by considering u to be equals to sine x, du, according to the substitution method, its derivative has to be present there. So du would in fact be cosine x dx. Now by looking at that expression, I do not have a cosine x multiplying dx and sine uh, to the 4. So for that reason, the substitution method uh, does not work. So we need an alternative method. However, by looking at sine to the 4, sine to the 4 consists of a product of four signs. So this being written as a product, the process of linearization would actually bring it back into a sum of simpler uh, trigonometric uh, expressions. So by uh, linearizing that expression, we'd actually be able to write it as a sum of trigonometric functions where we could in fact use the compound formula in order to uh, integrate them. Similarly, if uh, we look at the next one, we have a product of two sine functions with different angles. So, of course, here uh, the substitution method does not work and even the compound formula does not work because we're dealing with the product of two different functions. So, for that reason, by turning that product into a sum, by linearizing it, we'd be able to integrate uh, the function. So, and how does the product, uh, sorry, how does the process of linearization actually works? Now, you'd notice that uh, the double angle formula of cosine consists or includes powers of cosine and sine. Sorry, there's an x missing here. So, it, it in fact includes uh, uh, cosine squared and sine squared. So, this is why whenever you have a power inside the power of a trigonometric function inside uh, your integral, you would think of linearizing it using the double angle uh, formula of cosine. So powers of trigonometric uh, functions like cosine or sine would actually be linearized using the double angle formula of cosine, and we will see uh, in a bit how we do that. Uh, however, you'd notice that the compound angle identities of cosine and sine. For example, if we look at the addition formulas of cosine or the compound angle identities of cosine, you'd in fact notice that uh, these identities contain a product of two cosines or a product of two sines. So whenever you need to linearize an expression that has a product of two cosines or a product of two sines, you'd in fact use uh, the compound angle identities of cosine. Similarly, if uh, you have inside the integral a product of sine and cosine, in that case, you'd notice that these terms are present in the compound angle identities of sine. So to linearize such expressions, we'd in fact use the compound angle identities of sine. Now to make sense of that, let's just look uh, at the following examples, the one we just uh, looked at quickly, in order to see how we could really uh, do that process of uh, linearization. So over here, uh, we said that whenever you have a power of sine or of, or of cosine as well, you would in fact use the double angle identity of cosine in order to linearize that. 
However, by looking back at the double angle identity of cosine, now this has a power of sine. So we know that cosine 2x is in fact equals to 1 minus 2 sine squared. Now, inside that double angle identity, sine is squared. However, in the integral, we do have it uh, to the power of 4. But it's okay because we know that a power of 4 is in fact involving two squares so that would be equivalent to the integral of sine squared x all of it squared dx so now the sine squared we could in fact start by linearizing it using the double angle identity of cosine now we know that uh, cosine 2a is 1 minus 2 sine squared a. Now I'm using the double angle identity of cosine, the one in terms of sine, because I do have a sine squared inside the integral. So since sine squared is inside the integral, I do solve for sine squared. So sine squared a, okay, so by solving for sine squared, that would give me half into 1 minus cosine 2a. So replacing that uh, in the integral would actually give me. Now, don't forget that sine squared is squared inside the integral. So half squared, that's a 1 over 4, times the integral of 1 minus cosine 2a, all squared. Uh, I'm sorry, that should be an x here because I'm using an x. Okay, dx. So again, I still have a power. So over here, since this is in the form a minus b all squared, I think of uh, expanding. So if I call this integral i, that would be 1 over 4 into the integral of. Remember, I still did not integrate. I'm still uh, working out uh, the expression or simplifying it. So, love. So over here, uh, I still, I keep the integral sign. I still did not uh, integrate. So I'm still working within the integral. So that would be 1 minus uh, 2 cosine 2x plus cosine uh, squared of 2x all times dx. Now for 1, we can integrate it. It's a constant. We're fine. Uh, cosine 2x, we could integrate it using the compound formula since uh, it's in the form cosine u, where u is linear. However, uh, cosine squared 2x, now I still have a power of cosine here. So again, I need to use the double angle formula of cosine in order to linearize that. I'm going to write that with a different color here. So we know that cosine 2a is 2 cosine squared a minus 1. Now I'm using the uh, double angle uh, identity of cosine in terms of cosine squared because I do have a cosine squared here. However, uh, over here, I solve for cosine uh, squared a. So that would give me half into 1 plus cosine 2a. Now, over here, keep in mind that we have cosine squared of uh, 2a. So cosine squared of 2a, so a here is a 2x. So 2a would, in fact, be a 4x. So replacing back uh, in the integral, that would give me 1 over 4 times the integral of 1 minus 2 cosine 2x plus half into 1 plus cosine 4x, replacing by that identity. So now all we have to do is just uh, group and uh, simplify com, um, and add similar terms together. So it's 1 over 4 times the integral of. Now if I were to expand the half here, I'd have 1 plus half, which is a 3 over 2. Now, there's no similar term to cosine 2x, so I'm keeping that one. And then plus half cosine 4x. So that is my expression linearized. That is sine to the 4 linearized uh, in terms of uh, cosine. So now I integrate uh, term by term. So I would have 1 over 4 into now, this is a constant. Its antiderivative is that constant times x. 
according to uh, the table of integrals of the basic uh, trigonometric functions. So it's minus 2 times. Now, according to the compound formula, since 2x is linear, that the integral here would in fact be sine of 2x, but we do not forget to divide uh, by a, which is the slope of the linear expression inside of uh, cosine. Similarly, I have a half cosine 4x, an antiderivative of cosine 4x is sine, 4x, but we do not forget to divide by 4, and we already have a half, so that would give me 1 over 8 sine 4x plus k. Now, expanding the 1 over 4 would actually give me 3 over 8x. Now, 2 over 2 is a 1, so that's minus 1 over 4 sine 2x. 1 over 4 times 1 over 8 is a 1 over 32 sine 4x. So that is it for uh, the, th the first one. Now looking at the second one, uh, we've just seen that in order to uh, linearize such products, we need to refer back to the compound uh, angle identities of cosine or sine, depending on the type of product that we have. You'd notice that a sine times sine is in fact in the compound angle identities of a cosine. So these are the ones we uh, need to use here. Now, uh, I have to note that uh, there are rules for, uh, for uh, linearizing such products. However, I do not urge you to memorize them. You can always derive them using the compound angle identities the way I'm going to do it now. So we've just seen that the compound angle of identities of cosine are what give me a, uh, a product of two sines. So we start over here, a and b are 3x and 2x. So I start with cosine of a minus b, which is cosine of 3x minus 2x. And the compound angle identities always consider a to be the larger angle. So that would be cosine 3x cosine 2x, when it's a plus, that becomes, uh, sorry, when it's a minus, that becomes a plus for cosine, the operation switch, uh, sine uh, 3x, sine 2x. Similarly, cosine of uh, 3x plus 2x, which is cosine 3x, cosine 2x minus sine 3x sine 2x is just the same terms except the operations are reversed. Now you'd notice that these are the terms uh, that I want. So over here if I just add these two, these having opposite signs, they would just cancel out and I'd be left with the product of two cosines. But I don't want a product of two cosines, I want a product of two signs. So for that reason I subtract. If I wanted a product of two cosines, in that case I I would add to eliminate the ones I don't want. Now, I want the ones with the opposite sides, so I subtract these two in order to uh, be left with the two terms I want. So over here, that would be cosine of x, 3x minus 2x is an x, minus cosine of 5x, that's on the left-hand side. On the right-hand side, these cancel out since I subtracted, and plus minus minus that becomes the sum of these two so that would be 2 sine 3x sine 2x so over here in our integral sine 3x times sine 2x is in fact equals to half times uh, this difference so that would be uh, half the integral of cosine x minus cosine of 5x, all of this times dx. Now integrating the integral of cosine uh, is in fact sine x and the integral of cosine 5x is 1 over 5 sine 5x and that is according to um, that is according to the compound uh, formula. So expanding that would be half sine x minus 1 over 10 sine 5x plus k, and that is our antiderivative.